so much. I appreciate it. Um, okay, welcome, everyone. My name is Richard Marsco, as um, Gabby so nicely introduced me, um, and I am the District Small Business Liaison, often referred to as a DSBL, just uh, kind of lengthy on that title, right? Um, and I'm also joined today by my um, my direct supervisor, uh, Amanda Himes, and she is the executive liaison here at, Cal at Caltrans District 5. She's also formerly um, was a DSBL, so she knows a lot of information and she's going to help me out with some of the questions. Um, and my duties are to sort of assist small businesses in businesses in, in navigating the Caltrans process. Um, and again, we represent Caltrans District 5 which is the counties of uh, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, Monterey, San Benito, and Santa Cruz. So, you know, basically the Central Coast. Um, and our today's presentation, as you see on the, on the screen there, is Understanding Small Business Program Codes. Um, this is the second in our 10-part series, um, Paving Your Road to Success with Caltrans. Uh, and, and you can kind of drop in and out of that. We do encourage you to, to view all 10 if you're able to. Um, but uh, they are they are sort of standalone as well. So today, of course, we'll talk about the business program codes. Um, and it, it these codes are going to be very necessary for you to to keep your company's Cal uh, e procure profile uh, updated, and it'll really assist you with doing business with with Caltrans especially, but with with any state entity. And um, if you could put your contact info uh, in the, the chat feature, that would be great. And if you have any questions, of course, utilize that. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of talk, tell us a little bit about what your company does. Um, that will be helpful for us moving forward. Okay, before we get started, uh, let's review the Caltrans non-discrimination policy. So Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibits discrimination based upon race, color, and national origin, and specifically, no person um, in the United States shall, on the ground of race, color, or national origin, be excluded from participation in, be de denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. And that's really at the heart of everything Caltrans hopes to achieve. achieve. We'll often see links on here, and I know they're a little lengthy, so don't worry. We're going to be, uh, Gabrielle is going to be sending you um, a copy of this presentation, and you'll be able to just use the links that way. So don't don't feel like you have to <laughs> quickly write down all these if I move too quickly. But uh, yeah, you'll see a lot of links on the pages as we move forward. Um, in short, you know, this talks about what our mission is here at, at, at Caltrans. And it's to you know to provide a safe and reliable network to all the uh, the folks of California. Um, there's a lot of numbers, um, but in short, our mission is to provide a safe, sustainable, integrated, and efficient transportation system to enhance our state's economy and livability. You know, by the way, this is like the fifth biggest economy in the world, just our state alone. So not even uh, as part of the United States, but by itself. So we are really one of the driving forces of you know in the United States. Um, as you can see from some of the numbers quoted, uh, you know, we maintaining our, our transportation systems is a is an incredible operation in its scope. Um, and I, I want you to pay attention to the last two, the fourth and fifth bullet points, because uh, they kind of mention uh, that we need your assistance, as in the companies out there than the private sector, uh, to be our contracting partners. And uh, it's really essential to everything we try to do. And that, that means opportunity for you, hopefully. Uh, and I uh, hope that you will you know, kind of see that as we move forward through these presentations. Um, this slide here kind of talks about what our um, goals are. And we, we covered this a lot in our last uh, presentation, but you'll see there's uh, kind of two types of projects that as far as funding goes, the top, the top being there, you'll see state funded projects. So that's coming from the coffers of California, you know, mostly through taxpayer and, and other types of income. Um, and then you'll see we also have federally funded projects. So small business and disabled business better business enterprise are going to be under the state uh, funding system. And then disadvantaged business enterprise are going to be under the federally funded projects. And um, we we covered that a lot in the last in the last uh, presentation. But basically, if you can get your business certified, and you may even qualify for all three, depending on you know the the circumstances of your business, but 
we're happy to help you with that certifying, getting certified, and we'll we'll provide a lot of information to you in order to do that. And some of you may have already done that, so uh, we'll move through that slide. And just know that if it, if a project has even a dollar of uh, federally funded um, dollars uh, provided to the budget, then we're going to be it's going to qualify for all the federal uh, rules. So we'll move forward here. Okay. So today's learning objectives. Uh, let me start with this. This is a complicated presentation um, and it can feel like we're gonna throw a lot of information at you today, but remember you'll have uh, today's presentation as a resource um, for you. And, and don't feel like you have to completely uh, be an expert on any of this uh, by the time we finish. Um, this is really just an overview, like, hey, we're just introducing you to it. Um, and then of course you're, you're welcome to ask any questions. Um, but our, our uh, objectives today are going to be talking about the, uh, the Caltrans work codes that we utilize. Uh, and uh, the first one being the North American Industry Classification System, or NAICS. So we're, we're going to shorten that. That's kind of a mouthful, right? Uh, so the North American Industry Classification System, and again, it's, it's, it, we shorten it to NAICS. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, the United Nations Standard Products and Service Codes. UNSPSC uh, for short, and even that's a mouthful. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna look at those, and then we're all gonna also gonna look at. Uh, I think I mentioned the Caltrans work codes, uh, and that's our own system here internally. So that's just utilized by Caltrans, and we'll talk about keywords, uh, which are important to keep your profile um, up to date and to uh, easily kind of describe what your business does and what what uh, sort of uh, sorts of products you sell or what sort of services you provide. Um, and we'll talk about that too. And that's gonna be the primary focus today will be all of this information. And it's it's a lot, but we'll, we'll get through it and we'll show you kind of uh, walk you through it. And then of course, as a, and I'll, I'll mention this again, probably several times, you know, myself, I, I'm a D, the district small business liaison. So I'm here as a resource to you. So if you ever need to really go over this, do a, a you know, drill down on some of this information or perhaps, um, just look at one specific part of it that you weren't as clear um, on. Uh, we can absolutely do that. So please uh, utilize me. You know, if you want to make an appointment, we can do that uh, by phone. We can meet in person as well. Um, and then we'll walk you through all this information. And uh, a lot of these tools that are going to be available to you are going to be are, are going to help you with uh, researching historic contract cost data. And we'll we'll talk about that in this presentation today. And uh, you know, by looking at prior information from other people's bids, it, it's going to be helpful for you to, to get a, a good uh, foundation for what's how to best approach your own bids, especially when you're first starting out. So that will be uh, sort of a, a helpful resource for you as well. Okay, so the first part is going to talk about Caltrans work codes. What are they? Where can I find more info? How do I update my profile? And, uh, you know, we'll talk about all that. So in this section, we're going to talk about in, in today's training, we're going to dive in and get a better understanding of what they are, how they get used and by whom and how to update them on your profile. So codes are assigned at the time of certification. So the Caltrans work codes are assigned based on the pro your primary business activities or your business's private um, primary activities. Um, and they supplement the North American Industry Classification System or NAICS codes. Um, and they help to describe work items on contract bids, summaries, or scopes of work. Um, they can be added after a firm has been certified, or if you obtain an additional license or skill, you know, as your business grows, that can happen, right? And you can visit the Caltrans Disadvantaged Business Enterprise uh, DBE, because again, work codes are really going to be focused on the federal projects. Uh, and you, we have a... Um, they have a website, which we'll, I'll, I'll show much later in the, in the uh, presentation, but caltrans.dbe.com. Um, it's kind of newish. We just kind of rolled that out. And that is a really great uh, website for any DBE uh, information. And Caltrans work codes are assigned at the time of certification, like I mentioned, and describe the primary business activities your, your business has. Uh, and uh, to reiterate, these work codes supplement the NAICS codes that we'll also talk about. And... Uh, and, and on work items on the contract bid summaries or scope of work. So here we have a, sort of a screenshot of what you might see on the Office of Civil Rights webpage, which is on the Caltrans, uh, the dot.ca.gov. And again, we have a link at the bottom there that you can just use directly to get to it. 
Um, to view a list of the work codes in their descriptions, go to the OCR's website and navigate to the DBE search page, which we're seeing in front of us, uh, and use the link provided on the slide. Oh yeah, mentioned that. And then click the access work code description chart link. And that is there at the bottom. It's kind of got a red box around it. And this will bring up an Excel workbook listing, the work, and it'll list the work codes and descriptions under each category. Um, and it will be uh, basically the categories are going to be construction, construction supplier, professional services, et cetera. And we'll look at that on the next slide here. So here's what you would find if you utilize that link. And once you open the Excel document, uh, you'll see the work code utilization tab with information related to work codes and the authority to assign NAICS and work codes. So that's a lot. It's a lot of information I just gave you. And I think once you actually begin this process, and by the way, some of you may have already uh, done that, so no worries. But for those of you who are just really, really starting out, you'll see some tabs there. So it says work code uh, utilization kind of highlighted in green. And then you'll see some other tabs to the right. And those will help you to drill down a little more. There are five additional tabs, like it says, construction, construction supplier, professional services, truckers and transportation, and all industries, which kind of covers everything else that's not in the other ones. And uh, they provide the work codes, description, license requirement, and NAIC codes for that specific category. So they're going to also show you what the NAIC code is, the corresponding one. This is just a slide talking about some of the most needed professional services. So these are probably not gonna be ones that your company offers just based upon the fact that they're the most needed it shows you that probably not a lot of companies are offering them. That's why it's always hard to find, but we just thought it would be an interesting um, to put those examples up. Uh, you'll see trucking, some of the most needed. Uh, so if, you, if we were looking for a trucking company, this would be some of the things that some of the more needed um, types of trucking that we'd be looking at. And again, if you don't happen to have a trucking company, no worries. Again, we're just using it sort of to show you some examples of that. So you'll see end dump truck, asphalt, asphalt oil tankers. Um, so on this page, we're just gonna see um, some, some more examples of most needed for construction. So again, if you don't have a construction company, but this just, you, you know, look at this as a as a as an example of what might be for the industry you're in. Uh, but concrete barriers, drilled holds, road signs, lots of different kinds of technical um, things. And we'll go to the next one. And then these are the most used. So the previous slide was talking about what is the most um, needed. And these are the ones that are the most commonly used in projects. And again, if you're not in a construction company, no worries. But it's just kind of interesting to look at. And there are roadway excavation, fencing, paving asphalt. I don't know a lot. I'm not a I'm not a construction person, by the way. Um, not everybody is a, is going to be an expert like uh, about that, despite working at Caltrans. But I'm learning more and more about it. But uh, but some of these, as you can tell, are construction terms. So we'll go to the next page. And Richard, this is Amanda. I'm just going to jump in real quick and say. Um, we have been asking in the chat what each business does, and we have um, a, a good mix today that, you know, um, some of these these jobs that are on the screen that, you know, possibly your business can do or, or related oh, to good. as far as um, there's a, a structural firm. Um, I see there's a junk removal and hauling, which, you know, definitely we could use subcontractors for that. Yeah. Um, and then again, um, everyone's either certified or looking to get their certification. So that is excellent. Um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and, and put your information in the chat so you can also network together. But just wanted to jump in there um, to let you know, Richard, thank you. Yeah, no problem. No, that's, that's very interesting. Um, so I'm glad to see that. Um, we definitely have a lot of, I mean, I think, you know, when you think of Caltrans, you probably think of construction, um, but we do have a lot of different types of uh, work we do and a lot of services we need. And and so uh, so so I'm glad to see we have such a great variety of, of folks uh, joining us today. Um, okay, so adding and updating work codes in your profile. Work codes can be updated or added after certification if you want to obtain an, a, an additional license or skill. So when you first get certified for as a disadvantaged business enterprise, um, and again, that's what we're focused on here when we're talking about the Caltrans work codes. Uh, you're you're going to be 
a lot of this information that you'll do while you're filling out your paperwork to get certified will be what Caltrans will utilize to, to put up. So much of this is just informational. You don't have to really do anything, but we're providing the, the, the websites for you to gain more information and to know what was being done on our end while you're waiting to get certified. And so, so it's interesting to know that, but, but what can happen with the business? And I think this is not an uncommon situation. Your, your business grows or you branch out into different areas and you want your, your, um, your, your, you know, your uh, impure uh, profile, excuse me, to, to rep, to, to represent what you are doing currently. And so that could happen. So contact, basically just know to contact me and we'll provide you with the paperwork or the web link to be able to update your system. And so there's some links on here that will help you with that. But I think just remembering just to reach out to your local DSBL, district small business liaison, such as myself, will be kind of helpful in, in getting yourself updated. And, and remember to do that as your, as your company grows because you want to get all the attention that you deserve. Okay, so let's look at the DB search website. Uh, and you'll see that there's some, uh, you know, uh, links on here. There's, and we're just kind of showing you what you're, what you're going to see when you go to the pages and where to go. But first, navigate to the Caltrans website. Step one, uh, go to the web homepage. You'll find the DBE program by navigating to the Office of Civil Rights webpage. Uh, and we have a, a, you know, that's number two there. And then one of the ways to get there is to click the programs icon. Uh, which is uh, circled there on number one, and you can just click that, and that will that civil rights will come up, and you can click to get there. Uh, you can step two, click on the civil rights link. Yep. Step three, click on the certified California Unified Certification Program, CUCP, and that will help you as well. And then step four, you, they will take you to the California Unified Certification Program link or uh, page, and then you can search for certified. Uh, firms under the vendor certification section. And let's go to the next page. And again, when you when you're actually doing these things, um, you'll it'll it'll again it'll make a little more sense in the and and it'll see how you uh, build upon it. But always refer back to this uh, presentation, uh, which again will be sent out to you after today's presentation. A certified vendor directory will populate that looks like this. So this is what you will see. Uh, the feature allows you to search by certification type. Um, so if you're uh, looking for uh, DBEs, then you would, you, there's a box there that you can click. They've also clicked the airport concessions disadvantaged business enterprise. That may not be something that you are interested in, but we, we leave it up there in case you are, because you could be doing business with the airport here in San Luis, for instance. Uh, <clears throat> you can also look for the business name or DBA doing business as. Uh, you can look for business description or commodity code, contact person. That can be a little tricky with the contact person because that sometimes changes, but uh, location uh, and by reference. Once you have entered your search criteria, you must indicate that you are not a robot. <laughs> so do make sure to do that. And then it will allow you to click search or download entire directories and uh, you can look, search for other items as well. Okay, so we've talked about Caltrans work codes, and now we're going to move on to North American Industry Classification System, which is, is a mouthful. So again, we'll use the NAICS um, uh, for short, and I think that's pretty common for it to be referred to as that. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at that in the next few slides here. Okay, what are they? How do I find out more info on them? And how can I update my profile? So we'll, we'll definitely look at those three things to help you as you navigate the, you know, finding out more information on the NAICS codes. NAICS, and I'll say it one more time, North American Industry Classification System. These codes help to identify what your firm's primary business function is. Uh, they're assigned to you and, and will determine, uh, they're assigned to you when you're filling out your disadvantaged business enterprise program certification. Uh, prime contractors and state purchasers also use these codes as search criteria to find DBEs from the database. NAIC codes are listed on your DBE profile and are assigned to you by Caltrans, as I mentioned. Uh, they are based only on the work that your business is capable of at the time of certification. The reason why I point that out is if you're about to expand your business, so you're going to buy a bunch of trucks, but you don't currently have trucks at this time, then we're not going to be assigning you trucking as part of your um, codes because you haven't, you don't officially have that yet. 
But of course, like we said, there is a process for you to update later. Um, they're based on the work, again, they're based only on the work that your business is capable of at the time of certification. NAICS codes can be added or updated, like we mentioned. If you obtain an additional license or skill and you would like to add that, uh, just, just reach out to me and I'll get you the paperwork to do that. And then that you will then submit that to the DBE certification branch of Caltrans. And so the next couple of slides will demonstrate how to search for NAICS codes on the NAICS website. So you don't have to do this, but we just think it's kind of interesting. So we're giving you the information on how to do it. To find additional information on the NAICS codes, visit the NAICS website and search for the codes that pertain to your firm. And uh, you'll see up in the top left-hand corner there that we have the direct link. Uh, and the link for the NAICS website is on this slide, like we mentioned. And then once you navigate to the homepage of the NAICS website, select NAICS code search. And, and that's kind of, uh, I think it's outlined in red, but let me, there we go, NAICS code search. So it's been highlighted on the screen for you to look at. There we go, striping, sorry about that. So striping is the example that we're using on this. Striping, by the way, is, you know, like when they, on the roads, when they have, um, you know, the lane striping. Um, so that's the example we're gonna use. And then you select the hyperlink under the next column. And there you go. So that's that's done in red right there. And once you select that hyperlink, a new tab will open. And that's gonna be on the right-hand side of the page there on, under number three. And that will give you a description of the work under this code. So we looked at this code, uh, it's 237310. And once we clicked on that, this other box that's on the page here today came up and it was talking about different kinds of uh, types of, of, of index entries, entries for that code. So again, this is a lot of information we're sending at you and it can sound a little confusing. Uh, but once you actually do this process, it will make more sense because you'll have the pages in front of you. But we've just thought we would be, send you these these pages just so you can know what's going to be um, on the page when you get there. You can also select any two digit code uh, or industry title to drill down further. So this is like you really want to get into the nitty gritty of all this. By selecting the code industry title, you can view the products or services within that category to see what pertains to your firm. Uh, remember, to make any updates to your DBE profile with the NAICS code, you will need to fill out a work NAICS code request form. So that is if you want to update your, your um, account, your profile rather, to reflect that you now are doing uh, other types of work. Then submit it to the DBE certification branch. To reiterate, you can get this form from, your, from me. So we have also listed the NAICS website link again. So in case you, uh, you want to utilize that. And I, I, I suggest you do. This is all very interesting. You may already have NAIC codes attached to your business, and uh, but it's good to know that maybe they to, to make sure that they are updated to to where your business is at today. Okay, so we talked about NAICS codes pretty quickly, but we also want to talk about the United Nations Standard Products and Service Codes (UNSPSC) uh, and the keyword, and also we're, we'll talk about keywords in this section as well. So. Let's say you're doing a project that only has state funding, then you're probably going to utilize the information that we're about to give you as opposed to what we've already gone through. What are UNSPSC codes? Where can I go to find out more info? How do I update them on my profile? And uh, we'll definitely look, you know, drill down a little further. Um, as in the previous sections, we'll, we'll find out what the, where, where these information is and where you can find out um, the what, the what these codes mean as well. Uh, we'll also review how to update your Cali Procure profile. Again, once again, after you've, you've started, you've already been assigned codes, you can then update them as your business grows or changes. So UNSPSC, United Nations Standard Products and Services Code. These codes are used to identify goods and services offered by businesses. These codes are eight digits. Uh, each level is, and there's a hierarchy with, four levels, and that kind of is that box that's uh, towards the bottom of the page. Each level is determined by two, four, six, or eight digits, with all remaining digits at zeros. And we just give you that, again, as uh, extra information. 
the lower the code level, the more specific the goods or services and identified. Excuse me. Most purchasers within the state of California utilize the third and fourth level of these codes. So that's why we stopped at the fourth level there at, in the box. Um, you can update. Uh, the, oh, these codes are listed on your Cali Procure profile. So Cali Procure, by the way, um, I should probably address that. I don't think it's on a slide here. That is the California government marketplace. It's an online um, website that all state agencies, so Caltrans for sure, but all state agencies, state government agencies utilize. So it's really important for you to have a, a profile on there if you want to if you want to be noticed and be able to do business with with the uh, with the state of California. So good to know. And we'll get, provide that link, by the way, uh, later in the um, presentation. A great resource for questions related to you and SPSC codes, um, as well as uh, the keywords that will help as descriptors for your for your profile uh, is going to be on the Department of General Services. So that's another state agency. They're separate from Caltrans, but they kind of help out with a lot of different things. I would say most state agencies work closely with DGS. Um, so we've provided their links on here, and we'll we'll also talk about them a little bit more as we go on. And we'll show you at the end, we're going to have a resource section that will have a lot of these um, links kind of in one place that we've talked about today. So keywords are used to describe the work and services your business provides. Uh, when creating your profile on Cali Procure, make sure to comprehensively list all the keywords that are relevant to the products and services you provide. Um, it's, it's really important that you have as much information on there as possible. Caltrans buyers may use keyword searches, and I think that's actually a kind of a common thing, in the database uh, when they're looking for small, small businesses to purchase from. Some keyword tips from the DGS website are to include synonyms and related works, words, excuse me. For example, if you sell copier paper, besides paper, perhaps include the word copy and copier. I know that seems kind of, um, uh, you know, a little bit redundant, but it really is helpful. Or if you sell lights, include terms like lights, lighting and bulbs, perhaps even a, a lengthy word like illumination. Um, and because you never know what words someone on the other end when they're searching for you are gonna use. Uh, so I know Amanda has often told me that I should really encourage folks to even get a thesaurus uh, and, and look at, at what are related words to what they actually, uh, what, what business um, descriptors they use. List the keywords individually, not as a, a sentence. So, you know, maybe, you know, instead of like copy paper, use copy and paper, although you could probably do both. Uh, include general categories that your company provides. Uh, if you sell specific specialty brands, include those as well. So if you want to highlight the fact that you sell a certain kind of um, business product, then you might want to just make sure you list that. Uh, think about what the buyer might search for when, again, for when they're looking for you on the Cali Procure website. So remember that not everybody who's going to be purchasing at Caltrans is going to be a, a, a I don't want to say they're an expert, but they're, they're, they may not be. They may be uh, not as versed on the technical and industrial terms. So kind of put terms in there that are like layman's terms, um, as well as using those specific industrial terms. So that way you're hitting both audiences, both the expert as well as someone who's perhaps not as versed uh, on, um, say, the word striping, what that means. So really drill down on that. Um, and be sure that to use those in the keywords and even in the USPSC codes you include. You can also conduct market research. So this is completely open for you to do, but you could look up, a, so you could go on to the, the Cali Procure website. And again, we'll provide the link for you for that, but you can go on there and you can look at what are other competitors, um, competing companies, what did they, what do they have on their, on their um, profile? I, I really do recommend doing that just to see what they're doing. Now, of course, don't put anything down that's not actually something you provide. There's no point in that because it's going to put you in a really awkward situation. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're still being honest, but look at what your competitors are using and it's okay to, to learn from them. I, I don't think there's a, any uh, issue with that. Uh, and then do you provide the same services as these competitors? If so, be sure to include those keywords. Yeah. So include those keywords and UNSPSC codes in your profile. So, you know, check out what the uh, other 
folks are doing out there and, and maybe they can be helpful in you building your own profile. Um, update the UN SPSC codes and keywords on your Cali Picker profile by navigating to the Cali Picker website and um, at the link provided on this slide. So again, we'll, we'll write it here and then we'll also have it at the end. Uh, click on your username, click view certification profile, click amend application, then click save and continue on each page until you reach the other tab. Here at Caltrans, we don't have a CaliPicker account, so we can't really show you screenshots of that, so apologies. So the only one we have on here today is just the, the sort of opening um, uh, title page for the, for the CaliPicker website. But just know that it's super important, I think, for you to have that um, profile and to spend a little bit of time making it into what it, it should be, which is, you know, going to be showing everything that your company uh, provides or and, and all the services and products that you sell, because that's how people are going to find you on here, including primes. So, you know, there's going to be um, help trans purchasers looking at Caliper, but you also might have. So if you want to do subcontractor work for prime contractors, so for bigger, larger companies where you're doing a portion of the, the contract that they were able to win, um, this is a great way for them to find you. We have given you the steps to take. However, if you have trouble or questions, uh, once you log in, uh, you can always give me a call or, or shoot me an email and as well as DGS. Um, hopefully um, during business hours, at least someone will be able to get back to you right away, if not um, you know, uh, within a short period of time to help you with this process. Okay, so we're gonna talk about bid items and contract data. Just checking my time here. Uh, okay, so now you have to update your profile to make it more complete. You may be asking, how, how does this help me make my bids more competitive? Uh, and so the answer to that is, wouldn't it be informative to view what bids have been submitted in the past and, and, and that will help you with your current bid or future bids? And I think that's, that's probably going to be important, especially when you're first starting out. Okay, what are bid item codes? How can I make my bids more competitive? In this last section, we'll review what bid codes are and, what, uh, and, and we'll look at the database that contains the historic contract information. Um, that will be available to you for research. And I think that's an important part of, of being able to win bids. Bid item codes are assigned to each specific work item listed on a project in the bid item summary. We have some tools that firms can use to search the historic low bidding data on past construction projects. So I really wanna make this next point really, uh, I really wanna emphasize it. Please know, that the, that the mandate, and in most typical um, contract situations, contract bid situations, we have to go with the lowest bidder. Uh, that's just sort of been told to us by the legislature and by the taxpayers. And it kind of makes sense, you know, that we're utilizing your taxpayer dollars. Um, so knowing that you need to make sure your bid is as low as you can possibly do it that, you know, the, in a way that you can afford, of course, but just wanted to point that out. We will look a little further on the next slide. But uh, the second place you can search is the State Contract and Procurement Registration System, another long, lengthy mouthful. So that is often referred to as SCPRS, S-C-P-R-S, and that's a database. Um, and we'll send, give you links to that on the next uh, couple of slides, and it will be included in the resource slides uh, towards the end of the, uh, the presentation. So again, everything we're going over today, we're gonna to give you a link. Contract data cost. This can be accessed using the link that's at the bottom of the page here. This tool can be used by your firm to search historic low bidding data, which is kind of what I mentioned in the uh, previously on past uh, construction projects. You can use this to determine if your bid amounts are competitive. So if you're way out of the league um, from the last ones, it doesn't necessarily you won't win, but it's just good to know where you're at, right? You can search by the item code or description as well as drill down by districts and year. And that might be important. Because what flies in, say, District 6 might not be the same for here in District 5. Uh, so make sure to look at that. And you can look by year. And, of course, the further back in time you go, the more differential, I would imagine, in pricing. Uh, but it's important to look at that and to see, uh, you know, the codes that you're interested in bidding on. Okay. So we're going to come to a section called Frequently Asked Questions. And we'll look at those. And hopefully that will answer some of the ones that you have. Of course, we'll 
have uh, some time for you as well to ask any questions you have. Okay, my firm has changed. How can I make changes to my date DBE database listing? So disadvantaged business enterprise database listing. Please notify in writing the agency that certified your firm. Most likely it's going to be Caltrans, and since that's who we are, we'll talk. We'll use that. The agency is listed on your certification document. So when you get certification documents sent to you, it'll tell you who you did it with. I'm sure you'll remember that. But if you don't, just look back in your records. Locate your certifying agency by reviewing your online profile. So it's going to be also be on your profile and uh, and at, at the data, DBE database. And we've listed the link there. I'm a certified DBE business. How do I update my work codes now that I'm certified? And we did, we did cover this a little bit, but contact your local DSPL, myself, to request the work NAICS code change request form. Uh, once completed, this form should be submitted to the Office of Civil Rights at the address listed on the form. So the form will tell you where to send it. And if you have any questions about that, of course, uh, you know, reach out to me. I'm a prime contractor. How can I find DBE firms? So let's say somebody in the audience today represents a larger, more established company, and they're looking for smaller companies to help them um, you know, finish projects. All DBE certified firms are listed in the DBE's directory. Um, and you can access the database to find firms at your, in your area, and then we've provided a link. So that will hopefully be helpful for you if you're a prime. I'm, I'm imagining that most of the folks uh, are going to be in the small business category today. I'm a certified small business. How do I get connected with purchasers and contractors? Ensure that you keep your Cali Procure or DB profile up to date with your contact information. So. Can I, can I mention one thing that I've been told? If you have a person that's working in, say, you're as an administrative capacity, for instance, and that person is sort of the, the one that's, you know, in charge of all of this certification information, you know, if they move on, um, their email may not work anymore, right? So just be cognizant of if you list contact information, making sure it's it's something that's going to be monitored and it's going to be and, and if, it, if it's not, make sure it just gets updated, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, so this is the main way we, when we search to, for companies to do business with. So we're going to use that contact information. In other words, don't be afraid to reach out to the prime contractors to introduce yourself um, and, and, and talk about what, what services and, and, and products you can provide. Um, and then also attend the, the events such as the Meet the Prime. So these are events that we put on sometimes where you can, the, it's sort of like a, a networking opportunity where you meet with a prime contractor, you introduce yourself, you let them know who you are, what you are, where you're located, um, you know, what your capabilities are, and then you probably follow up with more formal information as well. Um, and these are really great networking opportunities that are, they're sort of sponsored by Caltrans, but you're really going to be dealing with the prime companies themselves. Uh, we also have procurement fairs and contractors boot camps. And the contractors boot camps are typically virtual. So we're going to provide a link later for an events calendar that you can check from time to time to find out information on boot camps. Um, so they're like workshops, basically, by the way. <laughs> they're not they're not the typical traditional boot camp, but we're going to give you a lot of information. And um, <clears throat> those are often held in other districts. Um, for sure, we're going to start doing those in District 5, hopefully uh, in the coming year. And uh, but it's a really great way for you to find out information on things, as well as, like I said, if it's a procurement fair or a meet the primes event where you can actually network with other businesses. Um, can I get notif Can I get notified when a contract related to the services my company offers is posted? Yes, you can, but you have to opt in. So basically what you're saying is if you're, you're going to basically put down your information, you're going to opt in to receive notices from Caltrans Electronic that will let you know that, hey, there's a certain um, project coming up or bid that you can look at, and it's going to be really important for you to maybe monitor those. Um, I know that some of them will not be something you're interested in from time to time, so it's easy to just not look at those. But if you don't opt in, we, you won't receive that information. And then you can still find it, of course, but then you have to make the effort to go and uh, go on to the eProcure site to, to check it out yourself. So I think the opt-in is actually a pretty good thing. We're the state. We don't, you know, we're not going to sell your information to other people. We're not here to spam you. But but I think in this situation, it's OK to be informed. Right. Um, so we have provided a link there to help you. And uh, I've been promising this uh, for a while now, so we'll talk about it. But uh, it's uh, resources. 
um, and we'll we'll talk about a lot of the the organizations. Uh, some organizations that are in this the uh, community that can help you. Obviously, Women's Business Center, which you are having, uh, which sponsored today's event with us. Um, they are they are amazing, and I, I'm assuming you have some interaction with them. At least you visited their website. Uh, but they they are amazing. So we'll we'll talk about some other resources that are available to you. Um, okay, so the DB website. So these are for, these are this page is really related to what we talked about today. So the DB website, there's kind of two, and I I recommend looking at both. There's one uh, the top one there, the dot.ca.gov one, which has is going to be the civil rights page that has a lot of information, and it's a great informational hub. But we also have, uh, again, kind of newer to our whole system, the caltransdbsystem.com. And that is where everything is going to be put now. I would, I would imagine everything that's on the DOT page will also be on the Caltrans DB system page. Uh, and that's a really great system to be uh, familiar with. So make sure you look at that. The NAICS codes, uh, we have the direct uh, link. Again, we provided that earlier as well. The UNSPSC codes, there's a direct link to look at that. The contract cost data. So that's to look at previous information. Um, and then the skippers, uh, same thing. It's going to be state contract and procurement registration system. So you can find out about prior bids and really drill down on some of that information. And then here's some more of our links that will help you. Uh, we have the Caltrans website itself. So that's like the kind of the mothership, you know, the dot.ca.gov. And everything about Caltrans that is going to be available to the public will be on there or we'll have links to it. And then on that page, we have it's it's not really its own website. I probably should have changed that title, but it's the Office of Civil Rights. They have their own section, if you will, of the Caltrans website. Uh, and then I mentioned this earlier, but the outreach events calendar. So all Caltrans related, uh, whether it's with uh, a partner like the Women's Business Center or anything else will be on this events calendar. And that's good to look at. I would look at it like maybe uh, from time to time, maybe every other week or something. And you can see what's coming up over the next several weeks. Con I, I think that's valuable to you, especially if you're starting out your Caltrans or state uh, contract journey. Uh, Contractors Corner is primarily going to be for folks who are in, as it suggests, in construction or contracting. Uh, and then that bottom one is is maybe the most important of all, the Cali Procure website. And that's, that's a really valuable website. And I I can't recommend you, uh, if, if you take away anything from today, it's having an account on that. Uh, here are some community resources. So these are not Caltrans folks, but they are definitely our, our allies, if you will. Um, Apex Accelerators, they used to be called PTAC. I think a lot of the world's servers first from that, and they even have an online presence that will, will get you there. But they are located throughout, I think the country, but for sure California. And um, they have... Um, they're, they're local, um, well, it's not su super local if you live in San Luis Obispo County, but their nearest office, I should say, is in Bakersfield, and we're, we're considered part of that, that district, and it's called Golden State Apex, and they are in Bakersfield, so that is kind of bad news, but you are welcome to drive there if you wish, but they also do a lot of virtual information, and they can meet with you uh, virtually. We, of course, have the Women's Business Center, which is here in slow i think i put their uh link up there but they have other locations throughout the state as well um and uh they have you know one of the things they they do is they have they obviously cater or um design their programs i should say for for women and women business operators and owners but despite their name they offer uh services to everybody so you're you're welcome to be involved with them and uh i i think they've been a really great partner for us and i i can't highly recommend them enough um, as, as another uh, resource available to you. We also have the Small Business Development Centers, SBDCs, um, and they're again uh, located, I think, throughout the country. Uh, and we have one here in San Luis Obispo. They're affiliated with Cal Poly and they have a brick and mortar office. I believe it's downtown. And they do a lot of great uh, uh, programs as well for uh, you know companies that are just starting out or even more established companies. And if you're a tech company, I would for sure talk to them because that seems to be a lot of their focus, but they are able to provide information for any general uh, business. Uh, and then SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives, uh, also called SCORE, they are going to be primarily like a mentoring system. So it's going to be, as the name maybe suggests, folks who are maybe retired or semi-retired or uh, or just want to spend a little extra time helping others. And they're going to be folks who are entrepreneurs, business 
owners or have worked in, you know, for large companies, they're, they have a lot of information to give and they, they can be a wealth of information. You know, I, I find uh, talking to people like that, you, it's really amazing what you can learn. And I'll bet you they can help you with any challenges. They've probably seen them or if maybe they made mistakes and they're like, hey, you know, try to avoid this. But they're, they're, they're a great organization, too. And a lot of it is under the Small Business Administration. That's at the bottom of the page there. They are going to be sort of an umbrella organization that works with Women's Business Center, a lot of the organizations I just mentioned. They also have their own resources. So maybe just visiting their site is, is uh, a good idea. I went to an event recently where um, they had a speaker and he, he was actually, this guy was, was fantastic. So if you reach out to them, I, I feel like you'd probably gain some knowledge from them as well. This is our district map. So I, you've heard me talk about Caltrans District 5, you know, and, and, and that's, that's all well and good, but it's hard to remember all these districts, right? So this map kind of gives you a clear indication of what, uh, what areas are covered by what districts. In some cases, the district is going to just be one county because it's a lot. In other cases, it's going to be a bunch of counties. Um, so we've provided all the links on here with all the counties in each one. And here's my suggestion. If your company is located within one of these districts, try reaching out to the DSBL in that area and they'll give you the most precise knowledge. But any DSBL, including myself, will be able to give you a lot of great general information. And if you're looking to look for, to do work outside of um, where you live. So let's say you, everybody here in the audience is from San Luis Obispo County or at least district five, I should say but you wanna do some business in Kern or in Fresno, um, maybe reaching out to the DSPL out there just to introduce yourself and get a feel for, for how they do things over there. And especially if you have specific questions, I do, I do recommend doing that. Sometimes it's hard to get a hold of folks I know, but so that's why we're always here in the other districts to help you as well, including myself. Uh, and if you click on the links that are, uh, so it says district 10 um, in blue. If you click on that, it will take you to their webpage um, that's just for District 10. That's on the main DOT website. And again, for District 5, it will take you to our website. Excuse me, Richard. And sorry. It, sorry, sorry yes. to interrupt, Richard. I just wanted to give you a little time uh, time period here. We're at 10 minutes out, just giving you a little heads up. Yeah, I think we're doing good. We're almost to the end. We're actually a nice. couple of slides out. So thank you, though. I appreciate, I know I've been checking my watch. Uh, so okay. I, I do appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, welcome. thank you, Gabby. Uh, so again, if you click on District 5 here, it will take you to our website, all right? And then this is just a page talking about what I do. So I'm the District Small Business Liaison. Again, it's a little bit of a mouthful. Um, and it, there's someone like me in all 12 districts, and some districts actually have a couple of folks doing it because they're just so large. Um, and we'll give you information about small business certification, disabled business, business enterprise certification, disadvantaged business certification and programs. Uh, we'll do outreach like today, uh, you know, and we'll give you education, which I think is also kind of what we're doing today. And then one-to-one -one technical assistance, we can absolutely provide that. And then if you have, um, if you're being frustrated by something, or if you just have a, a specific concern, or you actually have uh, a complaint about something, we, we have, because we're state, we have a, an official way to do that. So I might be the first stop for you to start that process. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And if you just want to vent, that's okay too. Uh, and you'll see there's a link on there. That link will take you to all the DSBL, to the DSBL contact list for the entire state. So the previous one shows you the maps. So you're like, hey, I want to do something in, in District 3. Well, if you click on this link, it'll tell you who the District 3 DSBL person is and how to contact them. Um, okay. So we'll come, we've come to the end here and I really do appreciate it. Uh, by the way, think of the DSPL as kind of a concierge. So we're not always like the information, we may not be the, the expert on the information that you're there you're seeking, but we can be a starting point for you. We can either put you in touch with that or person or that, uh, that agency, or we can um, give you uh, some advice uh, specifically on how to, how to navigate all this. And we know it's a lot. We, we, we do appreciate your patience with our processes. Um, and, and yeah, so think of as a concierge and we'll have some questions if there are any, and if there's not, that's okay. And if you think of something uh, tonight and you want to get a hold of me tomorrow, no worries, I'm here for you. And 
Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. So I'm Richard Marsk. I'm the District 5 DSBL. That's my um, cell phone number uh, for business hours. I work a 8 to 4.30 sch schedule typically. So if you happen to call outside of those hours, I will definitely try to get back to you as soon as possible. Emails, always good. Um, but I know phone calls are, are more preferable for some folks. And sometimes it's just kind of a complex thing you want to explain. And, you, and you're also welcome to reach out doing both. Um, but I'm available here to you, um, and I, I hope to provide services to you.